Hi, thank you everyone for joining. Uh, my name is Erin Roche. I'm the CEO of Candy and Flowers, a PR and marketing firm for the cannabis industry. And um, I am delighted to be here today with Sarah Rotman. Um, Sarah owns and operates one of California's largest legal outdoor cultivation farms. Um, it is actually the largest woman-owned uh, legal outdoor cultivation in California. Um, and described as a gold standard by CDFA compliance officers, local politicians, and, and fellow farmers. Um, last year, Sarah grew and sold close to a half a million pounds of cannabis in the legal market, and next year's crop is already pre-sold. Um, so now she's in her fifth year as a cannabis professional. Um, Sarah is the CEO of Well-Founded Botanicals, a brand that is launching this year. Um, she's also an industry leader and a pioneer, and I'm honored to be able to work with her every day. Um, but also to interview her um, and share the work that she's doing with all of you um, and the growth audience. So hi, Sarah. Thank you for, for joining us. Hey, Erin. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you. So um, first, I know um, your journey into cannabis um, is, is an interesting one. Um, tell us how you first got into, into cannabis. So um, my start into cannabis was an unplanned one. Um, it happened through grave illness. I was... Uh, diagnosed with severe Crohn's disease in the summer of 2014 that had gone misdiagnosed for over 10 years. Um, and by the time I was diagnosed, it was because I ended up in the hospital in renal failure. And so I was really gravely ill uh, and, and damn near died from the renal failure. But um, anyway, that led me to a very long odyssey of healing. Uh, what I learned is that Crohn's disease not only is incurable, but they really have very few therapies that really alleviate some of the symptoms, which are debilitating pain, neurological deficit, uh, you know, Crohn's disease is related to lupus as well as rheumatoid arthritis. Um, and so in my case, I received, I was sort of having symptoms, you know, that fall into both of those categories. So again, neurological deficit, uh, incredible joint pain, in addition to like the eight 22 inch ulcers I had in my lower intestine, which I was told later made it that I hadn't really digested or properly processed any food for multiple years. So I was pretty sick. And um, I ended up going on a, a long journey of sort of traditional Western medicine. My father is a physician and I really believed in Western medicine and I still do to some degree. Um, but unfortunately they really had nothing for me. They ended up putting me on what's called a biologic uh, and that was a medicine uh, given to me intravenously once a month. Um, it's something that they use to combat uh, AIDS and it effectively turned off my immune system. Um, it's only 50% likely to work and it costs $15,000 a month. And unfortunately for me, rather than alleviating my symptoms, it actually put me in liver failure. So, you know, I had been put on this biologic and uh, not only did it not alleviate my symptoms uh, and cost $15,000 a month, but it caused crippling depression and put me in liver failure. So, um, you know, at the time I was in just extraordinary pain. And I remember that day when I went to my rheumatologist and he explained to me that I had um, started losing my liver function due to the medicine. And I asked him, well, what, what do you have for me? And he said, Sarah, we have nothing to help you. And I just remember feeling so helpless and so in pain. I mean, at that point I hadn't, I had to sell my company. I couldn't work. Um, I hadn't laughed in like two years. I was in so much pain. And I remember sitting, it was three o'clock in the afternoon in Los Angeles. And I, I sat on the sidewalk in broad daylight on the sidewalk in front of that doctor's office and cried like an infant. Um, I was just so hopeless. And so, you know, my husband champion of a man that he is said, look, we, have to take your health, you know, into our own hands. And he'd been really encouraging cannabis. He'd been reading a lot about CBD and, you know, it's anti-inflammatory properties. You know, Crohn's disease is a disease of inflammation as so many diseases are. And, um, you know, I had always struggled a little bit with THC psychotropic effect. I'm a bit of a control freak and that's kind of uncomfortable for me. So um, I was a little bit afraid of cannabis, although I did know it to be effective for cancer patients for their pain. And I, I certainly respected that, but I just was afraid, truthfully, of what would happen to me psychotropically. I was already in a pretty bad place mentally. So, um, you know, he had sort of shared with me that CBD was this possible you know, avenue for me and that, you know, combined with lower levels of THC might be an effective therapy for me. So, you know, I like to say at that point, I would have sucked the fart out of a dead chicken if somebody told me it would work. And um, I, I was very happy to try anything. So we got our medical cards living in California as we were. And um, I was able to get 
some medicine also that wasn't a smokable. I was also kind of an avid anti-smoker and as ill as I'd been for years and years and years, I couldn't imagine, you know, taking up smoking as a thing that would help me. And so I was really excited to learn that there were things like tinctures and edibles that were different mechanisms whereby I could sort of get this benefit from this sort of wonder plant. And so we found um, a few dispensaries um, or, you know, medical collectives at the time under Prop 215 that, you know, had tinctures and, um, you know, concentrates. And lo and behold, they really, really worked. I mean, the, the CBD with low THC really did alleviate my symptoms. But back in Prop 215, before the regulations that we currently have in place under Prop 264, you know, while well intended, a lot of these collectives were selling um, or, you know, giving members um, therapies that, you know, aren't, you know, we had no idea what the dosage was. We had no idea if there was pesticides in them. You know, they were incredibly inconsistent. The labeling was unreliable. And so during the course of me experimenting and trying to find a consistent helpful medicine, <clears throat> I was, I had, I got arsenic poisoning from, you know, tainted concentrates. You know, when you're doing concentrates, anything that's on that plant is concentrated like a thousand times. So if somebody uses a little roundup around those plants, you know, that's what you're ingesting. Um, and one rather unfortunate occasion, what was labeled high CBD was actually incredibly high THC. And I was on my way to a very important meeting that I could not attend because I was talking to my fingers on the way up to the elevator and had to get help getting into a taxi, couldn't even explain where I lived and was profoundly stoned for about three days. And that was really uncomfortable. And at that time, my husband and I also to help alleviate my symptoms had gotten very interested in, you know, farming our own food. So we basically were growing all of our own food. We had a farm in Northern Santa Barbara County. And we started getting very, very interested in regenerative farming, um, sort of, you know, really thinking about what goes into your body, you know, sort of good in, good out. And so we had started, you know, we had chickens and cows and pigs and, you know, vegetables, and we were doing all of this ourselves. And that did help with my symptoms, but wasn't sufficient. And he sort of said, look, if we're growing all of our own food, why wouldn't we grow our own medicine? We're in California. We can legally do this. And so we founded a collective in 2015. And that was how my journey began. Mm. Wow. Um, so, um, so as a cannabis entrepreneur, I mean, you, you, you came into this, you know, to grow your own medicine and then ultimately um, you're, you're now growing quite a bit of cannabis. Um, what, what are some of the things that you wish you knew about operating in the industry before you embarked on this journey? You know, I would say the things that I wish I knew are also the things I'm super grateful I didn't know because if I knew what I know now, I don't know that even I, bombastic as I am, would have had the courage to get started. I think the thing that has been most challenging is the moving target of regulatory uh, requirements, both at the state level and at the local level, more importantly at the local level. Um, but since we kind of came online, again, during Prop 215 and before Prop 64, you know, we were paying a lot of attention to it, but it, you know, it was a contentious political uh, football, if you will. And there was a lot of stakeholders with a lot of opinions and the legislation wasn't quick to evolve, you know, to arrive. And so, you know, imagine trying to operate a business where the laws that govern you are a moving target and are un unclear. So that has been incredibly challenging and incredibly expensive. And as a result, it kind of, um, open my eyes to the value uh, for any American, you know, to participate incredibly actively in your local government. Because what I learned is that local government has so much control over every aspect of your life, professionally, personally, and everything. And most of us aren't even aware of, you know, the laws that are being made around us and, and what, you know, exists to influence and control, you know, all aspects of our life. And so, you know, we all spend a lot of time paying attention to the national scene. But again, the local government is really where boots on the ground are going to have a direct and immediate influence on your life. And that was something I didn't know going in um, that I very well know now. And so it really produced um, an activist mentality in me that I will, will hold for the rest of my life. Mm. Um, you know, we know that the cannabis industry has an impending diversity issue. Um, and, you know, it's got a current diversity issue, actually. <laughs> Yes, current, mm -hmm. um, and you know, haven't really seen the solutions yet. Um, as an independent operator, I know you have a lot of a lot of opinions on on this um, and ideas. What should the industry be doing um, about it, or what could the industry be doing about about it? 
Well, it's really hard to even speak about the industry as a whole because I feel like we're very fractured. You know, I think because in California, every single local county has its own completely distinct set of rules. Therefore, you know, we end up being sort of a collective of, of smaller industries, you know, around the state. So Santa Barbara has an industry. And even in Santa Barbara County, we have two distinct um, sort of categories. We have North County, which tends to be outdoor growers, and South County, which tends to be greenhouse growers. And those requirements are different. So any of our local lobbying efforts or, you know, as we work on legislation or even solving problems, they're very, very different set of rules. And so as a result, we end up having this very fractured coalition, not, and not fractured because we're contentious, but fractured because all of our survival needs are very different, which makes it extra hard then to approach an issue as broad as, you know, lack of diversity um, in a singular voice. I can tell you that for the folks here living in North County, Santa Barbara, we're acutely aware that our population here in North County in particular is, is over 60% Latinx. So we personally on our farm and our independent farm work very, very hard to support the Latino community here. Um, you know, we know that they are underserved in the legislature. They are underserved, you know, statewide, local, you know, even on city councils, you know, we recently had a grand jury um, convene and it did not look like the electorate. It looked a lot like a very, very small minority portion of the electorate. It looked a lot like the U.S. Senate, if I may. And, um, you know, I think that that's unfair. But what we can do here in cannabis and what we're really committed to doing um, in at least Santa Barbara's North County, you know, we founded a thing called the North County Farmers Guild. Uh, and we have a campaign called Good Farmers, Great Neighbors, which is an educational campaign uh, that really serves to share kind of what we do with our regenerative farming practices, but also to address this issue of diversity. So for us here in Santa Barbara County, a primary concern is food insecurity. You know, we are one of the wealthiest counties in the country. And yet we have in the state of California, the third highest instance of poverty. I mean, it's, it's shameful. And most of that exists in our Latinx community. So here at our farm, you know, we make two commitments. One, we don't have a single staff member that isn't either female or Latina or Latino or both. So, I mean, not anybody. So we, and that's not because, you know, we're, you know, only picking from that community, but it's because those are the very, very best people for the job. And we're very proud to say that, you know, we have an incredibly diverse and supportive community. Um, and, but more importantly, our philanthropic efforts really focus on the food insecurity issue, because we know that systemic racism really starts when you prevent people from even having reliable source of food as, as young children. I mean, that immediately puts you on a track of, of desperation and it prevents any kind of upward mobility. So we are doing a lot of work with the Santa Barbara Food Bank and our philanthropic efforts really focus there so that we can at a foundational level support people to have true independence. And that really does start with making sure that they can get a square meal when they need one and, and focus on things that are going to make them able to ascend upward. And I think the other thing that's really exciting about the cannabis community, and this is true statewide, is if you can get to a place where your business can survive, you know, we are a new frontier. I like to liken us to Silicon Valley, you know, other than we don't look a lot like those guys, but we have an opportunity to give people opportunity for growth, management, you know, and, 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 and independence, you know, financially, you know, and also, you know, in their career. So, you know, again, our senior management is also all Latino or Latina. Um, and we're very, very committed to that. And we give them an opportunity to grow as far and as high as they want to so that they can actually, you know, go out into the world, whether they stay with us for 100 years or they go out into the community, they now have positions of um, senior executive um, experience. And I think that we're seeing far too little of that. I also think that um, we are sadly a minority in even this attitude. You know, we're not seeing enough people really go into their local community and take the talent um, that exists, you know, I think there's a, especially when people are getting investment money, there's an, um, a desire to bring in sort of the Ivy League investment types who, you know, those masters of the universe always know better than us poor farmers, but it turns out us poor farmers know how to farm. So <laughs> kudos to them, but you know, we're, uh, we're just farming, but we're doing a good job of it. I'm quite proud of that. Mm. 
Yeah, thank you. Um, so in addition to all of that, um, you're launching a beauty and wellness brand this year, uh, Well-Founded yeah. Botanicals. Um, tell us a little bit about the mission for the company, why you started it, and, and what we can expect. Sure. I'm really excited about that, actually. So Well-Founded Botanicals is, you know, our brand, and we like to say Well-Founded is, uh, you know, founded in wellness uh, for people, plant, and planet, right? So we um, definitely are a lifestyle brand. Um, but we are lifestyle wellness brands. So, you know, the goal is to provide therapies and um, <clears throat> diversions, I suppose, you know, for people who are wellness, you know, oriented. Uh, it's obviously all plant-based, so plant-based wellness for, for folks. And, you know, it really started from my experience with Crohn's disease. So basically, you know, as an extension of, of starting the farm, you know, we wanted to create therapies that are the therapies that I use in, in, in combating my disease. And then also, you know, just aesthetically pleasing things that you can enjoy, you know, from a recreational standpoint as well, but again, sort of with a mind towards wellness. Um, so basically we're starting with tinctures and capsules and we offer each one in three distinct doses because one thing I learned throughout my experience is that, um, you know, oftentimes it's very, very hard to create the correct dose for yourself. And you really do need to be able to sort of listen and learn your body and, and how much THC to CBD is going to make sense for you at any given time during the day. So we have very high CBD to THC ratios. We have a, a balanced ratio <clears throat> that we offer, especially in our topicals. And then we have higher THC for greater pain relief. And, and in some cases, you know, but recreational, you know, for those who enjoy a little bit more THC. So, but I think it's really important. And then also offering tinctures and capsules is which we're coming out of the gate. Capsules are so convenient and easy, you know, to use. They don't necessarily spill and, and tinctures, you know, really do allow for that tiny little micro dosing, you know, control that is really helpful to some. Um, one thing I think that's really distinctive about our products is we basically put in the, the most active ingredient, you know, cannabis uh, allowed by law per package. So we're really interested in giving our customers a lot of value. I see a lot of products on the market that charge a lot of money, but don't actually put a lot of cannabis in the bottle, so to speak. And we're also committed to working with botanicals that are able to be grown within 100 miles of our farm, if not directly on our farm. So you'll see that our carrier oil for our tinctures is safflower oil, which not only has um, anti-inflammatory properties is a very, very low water crop and it's grown here, you know, in central California. Um, we also use pomegranate as <clears throat> a natural flavoring agent because A, it's also very water um, conservative and uh, has great antioxidant and it just tastes fantastic. So a lot of tinctures that you might see on the market, you sort of have a gag reflex because it's not a very pleasant experience at all, but our tincture is actually quite luxurious and lovely and also effective. Uh, so whether you're taking it, you know, just sublingually or you put it in, you know, uh, you know, a little bit of seltzer water or whatever you might enjoy, it's actually an enjoyable experience. Um, we are going to be coming out with topicals too right after uh, the tinctures and the capsules. And those are amazing. I cannot wait. We have a wonderful body balm that's just the most luxurious, soft, moisturizing thing you've ever seen in your life, as well as a facial serum again with a lot of different plant-based uh, active ingredients that are really meant to uh, heal the skin, soothe, you know, create a lot of anti-inflammatory effects and also pain killing. So they'd be working great as a, as a balm, you know, if you've got sore muscles or joints <clears throat> like I get with my Crohn's or if you just, you know, they're great for eczema, which is also something I get as a result of Crohn's. <laughs> Crohn's is a lot of fun. And, um, and so again, a lot of these things are based on my experience, but they actually have a lot of application across uh, multiple different uses. And, um, and they are really just fun and luxurious. So even if you've absolutely nothing wrong with you, and I certainly hope that's the case, there's still a lot of, um, there's a lot of pleasurable experience in these, in these products. And that was one of the goals. Amazing. Um, so these products will be available in California um, this year. Yes. Um, yep. That's great. And if um, people want to find out more about you and more about um, the company and the products, they can go to wellfounded.com or Instagram, wellfounded botanicals. Um, yep. But th thank you so much, Sarah, for your time today um, and, and sharing your story. I um, really appreciate it. And I hope the growth audience enjoyed hearing from you. My absolute pleasure. And I really appreciate being included. Thank you guys so much.